Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be another long video because I'm washing the car. We're going away on holiday tomorrow, so I'm going to give the car a wash before we go away on holiday. Hopefully this is a motivational video, an inspirational video, um, as to how I got here. And there's three people involved with regard to me getting here in, in Thailand. And uh, the, the story is a good story. And as I say, listen to, to the end and I'll tell you my story as to how I got here and why I got here. And it's through other people. Now I've got to say, um, three inspirational people that changed my life. And um, I'm very grateful to, to all of them in my travels to getting here from from when I retired to the fire service. I was in the fire service for 30 years and I was fortunate enough to retire at the age of 50. And I've got to say, when I retired at the age of 50, I was very lucky and I always appreciate that. I had a passion and things like that. And I am lucky and I appreciate that every day. But anyway, getting back to the story. My life has had ups and downs. I've been married four times, divorced three times, lost a lot of money through divorce and one thing and another. I would say I've always been a good provider. So anyway, getting back to the inspirational side of all of this lot. And I've got to say, it started in 2002 when I was going through a very, very messy divorce. Take note and take advice of your friends, good friends. Listen to what people have to say and then evaluate yourself and then formulate your action plan by listening to others. Because other people have different views and different mindsets. And another long story short, and I've done another video about this, how Thailand changed my life. It changed my life. For once, I seen how people with not a lot of money can be very, very happy. And for me, it was very strange, I think, and how can people with very little money be so happy? When I've been working my socks off, I did three or four jobs. We had uh, three houses just about to buy our fourth house. Nice cars, nice, everything was nice about it. I thought, well, how come I'm happier with nothing than I had with everything? I had a lot of debt as well uh, to go along with that, but I had the plan so when I retired, we'd have 10 houses and a million pound in the bank. <laughs> a long way off that. So anyway, so that opened my eyes as far as being happy with little or no money. And you can be happy with, with a modest income. You can't live on for free. You can't live for nothing. You've got to have something. So that's the first, oop, that's the first important thing that you have to have something. You can't live on the wing and a prayer and um, you know what might happen. You have to make some plans and preparation for that. So when I retired in 2010, I went around the world. I bought a round the world ticket for 1,800 pounds and that lasted for a year and just to give you some idea of the places that I went and the people that I met and why I'm talking about this story. I went to New York, Las Vegas, San Francisco, Hawaii, and I went over to Fiji. Then I went over to uh, New Zealand, North Ireland, South Ireland, went to Australia, went to Singapore, went to Malaysia, went to um, Vietnam, went to Thailand, obviously, because I was very close there, went to Bali, went to India, went to Japan, and came back home to England. And that was my year of traveling around. And in that year, I'm going to talk about two inspirational people I met on the journey. And that's what I'm saying. Travel opens your eyes. You don't have to have a lot of money. And I'm going to do another video 
about how you can virtually travel the world for free. Uh, that's an interesting video because I did it. I travelled around the world for a year, then I travelled around Europe for about another year. So I've done a lot of travelling, I've met a lot of people. I'm a people person, I like talking to people because every person has a story. And I met some very, very interesting people. And this first guy I'm going to talk about, uh, we were on the bus in Vietnam. And uh, the bus journey to our next destination was six hours. And the bus was in Vietnam, no air conditioning, just open windows and very, very basic. And the only two seats that were left on the bus are the back of the bus over the engine, which is always going to be the hottest part of the bus anyway. So anyway, sitting on the back row was a couple, a couple from England. And uh, so we sat next to them. And I've got to say, for six hours on the bus, it passed like that. And why did it pass like that? Because I met one of the most interesting people that I've ever met in my life. And that opened my eyes big time. And it was just like, I couldn't get enough of their information. I was like a sponge, I was like, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Because they were living the life that I wanted to live. Full of uh, adventure and, and excitement and things like that. And there were a, a couple in, in the 50s, maybe. And uh, basically what made me excited about talking to these people is because they travel the world on a yearly basis. They'd never worked in England for 17 years. 17 years and they were a young couple so they weren't getting a pension which intrigued me even more like how do you live how, how do you get your money how do you survive because you've got no pension unlike me I had a at the time a five big age pension and that was funding our trip around the world and then he told me and he's he lives a very very modest life and uh it's, he, in England, he has a two-bedroomed house. This is how he gets his income. He has a two-bedroomed house, which, is, which he rents out. And at the time, he was getting 500 pounds a month. And that's his only income that he gets. And when he comes back to England, occasionally, he's got a son who's got a house who takes care of everything and renting the property out and maintains the van. And he has a van with a double mattress in and a porta potty. And that's his living accommodation when he comes back to England. It's all MOT and insured and things like that and roadworthy because his son takes care of it. And he says, why do you need a house? He says, we're only back in England for maybe three or four weeks at a time and then, then we're off on our holidays again. So he said, we, we only need something very, very basic and a van with a mattress and a part of potty, that was enough. So he had showers and that around his son's house and things like that. But he said, we have a portable shower. Van life, there's plenty of videos about van life. Anyway, so that, that sort of little bit of digress, but this is the person that I met. So, okay, he only has 500 pounds a month uh, income coming from his property. So I said, you know, £500 a month isn't going to give you enough money for accommodation and things like that. Ah, ah, he says. And this is what opened my eyes. And a whole new world opened. And he says, we look after people's houses. He said, we do house sitting. And he said, we look after people's pets. And he said, over the 17 years, we built up a reputation, he said, you know, of quality. And he said, you know, we're trustworthy and things like that. So he said, we have people we do regular house sitting for when they want to go on their holidays and look, need somebody to look after the pets. 
So he said, we'll go and look after their house, look after their pets for maybe two or three weeks, and then we'll move somewhere else. And he said, over the period of time that we've been doing this, we built up a, a big a big number of places that they always can go to and, and work for. And doing gardening work, painting and decorating, you know, doing some work. And this gives them free accommodation and free food. And they only have to do this for five days a week, three or four hours a day. So that gives them their somewhere to live and food. So they don't need to live on their 500 pounds a month because they're getting an ink, or, well, they're getting food and accommodation provided. And some places have motorbikes or cars that they can borrow to go and uh, explore the area. But they've done this for 17 years. And for me, if I had known this, I would have done exactly the same. Because it seems such a, a lovely lifestyle that you can go wherever you want, live wherever you want. Okay, you've got to give something back in return and that's giving your labor. And I would say another little sh short story from that. I learned from him and I'll, I did what he did. And we looked after somebody's house in Orvieto, Italy for three and a half months and our job was to look after their cat for three and a half months. Stunning location, Orvieto. We were like five miles away from the nearest town. Beautiful scenery. It was just like a dream come true. I think, wow, you know, this is superb. And uh, okay, we had to pay for our food, but the accommodation was for free. So, and that's just one little story of our, um, one little story of our journey and it opens your eyes up as to what you can do. So the other one, the second inspirational person that we met was in, in uh, New Zealand. We were traveling around because we hired a motorhome for three months and we did North Ireland and South Ireland. And we pulled onto a, a campsite that was, people had converted buses and, and ambulances into living accommodation. And we got talking to the people there. And uh, they lived this nomadic lifestyle in their school bus. And I looked at the school bus with a little heater in there and it was just like, I could live like this. And again, I asked the question, how did they earn the money? And uh, they were very good at crafts and things like that. painting, painting old saws, painting a circle, a saw blade with a picture, a bit like the canal boats in, in England where they have the watering cans and the, the paint the watering cans and things like that. And obviously some other people had building skills and things like that where they would work a certain part of the year to be able to maintain this lifestyle. So bearing in mind, I've gone from working seven days a week, having four jobs, to talking to these people who live in a bus. And for me, at the time, it looked like an idyllic lifestyle. And I'm thinking, wow, I could do that. I really like the idea of doing that. So it opened my eyes again. And we lived three months in a, in a motorhome, small motorhome. And I found it dead easy and exciting because you just pull your motorhome up wherever you were and just like, that's your view for today. Stunningly beautiful is New Zealand. And we did that for three months. Opened my eyes, talked to many people in New Zealand for, you know, they have the same problems over in New Zealand as they have in the rest of the world. Mortgages, working, nine till five 
uh, not having enough hours in the day to um, you know to make ends meet everything was expensive and there's me living in my motorhome thinking I could just do this this is very a cheap way of living so that's me thinking out the box as far as why do you need a big three or four bedroom house with a big garden and things like that the whole world is there to be an adventure you can go and live I've lived in some beautiful houses around the world the Orvieto one was stunning but I've lived in farmhouses in uh, Trenyac in the south of France uh, the Pyrenees Italy, Spain, even even here in Thailand. I worked in Koh Kud for a little while uh, doing electrical repairs. Beautiful, idyllic situation. You know, it was in low season, the resort was closed, but I was renovating three bedroomed bungalows overlooking the sea. And what a beautiful work environment that was. So all of these opportunities are they waiting for you when you retire? Why retire and do nothing with your life when the whole world is out there waiting to be discovered and by talking to other people you won't get this in a five-star hotel you won't meet them type of people in a five-star hotel because them people who live in a five-star hotel live a totally different life I've only ever stayed in one five-star hotel I didn't like it, it was too posh I'm a working guy and I didn't fit in. I was totally different to these people, suited and booted. I didn't like it. I'm a normal, average, everyday guy, but I think outside the box and I live outside the box. And living here in Thailand, talking to other people, you can live a good lifestyle here in Thailand, but also you can, it can be a miserable place, Thailand because you can lose everything that you've ever worked for. And I know some guys that have lost everything by coming to Thailand. But it's been able to, to recognize where you are and how to save your money, don't lose it by listening to others. And lastly, coming on to the third most inspirational person that I know And that is me, because I took up the challenge. I listened to what people have to say, opened the box, and I dared to look outside of the box. And you discovered a whole new world out there. Okay, I bought this house, and I'm living here in Thailand. But Thailand is such a wonderful place to live anyway, on my, my thinking of it anyway. I'm a couple of years away, from, well, three years away from getting my big pension. Well, big pension, small UK pension. And that opens the doors again for travelling. Because then I'll have a little bit more disposable income. And um, we have this as a base. But my wife likes travelling as well and discovering new places. And I would say to those people that are close to retirement or are retired, there's a whole big world out there. Go and discover it. Go and listen to other people's views and stories and make your own mind up. Being tied to a, <coughs> excuse me, being tied to an office job or working nine till five, you just get pushed into that little pigeonhole and you think that's it. And when you retire, there's a whole new world. You don't need a big house when you retire. I'd be happy just living in a van with a mattress and a porta potty. And that's talking to somebody 12 years ago. And that's still always in my mind. And um, they're living, in my mind, a fantastic life. Not having to work for 17 years in a normal nine to five job. Okay, they still work by doing work for other people. But it's, a, it's in an environment that they choose to live, not forced to live every day. Anyway, so I hope this video has been inspirational. You got something from it. Leave a comment down below. Give it a like if you like it. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Subscribe would be nice. And until the next time, bye for now.